Key, welcome to Put In Work TV. We have enjoyed watching your journey and growth as an artist in the New England music scene and really want to hear more of your story. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You already know. So our focus is allowing our guests to tell their stories front and center without judgment or opinion. So Great. let's dive in. Okay, let's do it. How did it all begin, Key? It started a long time. I'm just joking. <laughs> My journey started abruptly, um, I guess. It started a couple years ago, back in 2020, during our pandemic. Difficult pandemic. But yeah, it started in 2020 when I decided to invest back into myself mm. creatively after a lot of turmoil due to the pandemic. And I was isolated at the time. Everybody couldn't go where they wanted to go. And I decided to go to the studio mm. after taking walks in the summer and investing in some beats on YouTube and freestyling and finding that those freestyles were dope to me. And it was dope to friends and family. I decided to record them. And then after that, I put out my project the following year in 2021 of July the 31st and thus my EP Baby Steps was born and it debuted six tracks all very versatile and different from one another and after that my career kind of took off wow wow I think it's super interesting I like you know it's the pandemic or social distancing and the first place that you decide to go, like on your Dolos, the studio, like yeah. talk to me about that. Hmm. It wasn't something that I actually just got up and decided to do. Like, oh, let me just go to the studio and record songs. It took a couple of months of me starting songs and writing them down and going on walks every day and replaying like different beats and freestyling on my own and then showing those things off to friends and family. And then after that, deciding like, yo, I think those are really good songs. What do you think? And other people saying like, yo, yeah, like I would love to hear that. And I remember talking to my brother and showing him some of these songs. And he's like, yo, these are fire, but why aren't these recorded? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, he's like, you need to record these. I, you know, I would love to tell more people about what you do, but I have nothing to show them. So I feel like once I sat down and had a serious conversation with him, I was like, okay, I need to record these songs. I've never recorded a song in my life. At the time, I didn't have the access to the community of people that I'm around now. So I had no idea where to go. But I did have a friend that I went to high school with, and he's also debuted on my project, Baby Steps. His name is MOA Cash. He was doing music prior to me, and he showed me a studio in Quincy called The Mix Loft. <laughs> and that's based in Quincy, and he just introduced me to one of the engineers. His name is Will French, and he's a dope engineer, um, fire person, and he helped me with my project. Wow, so, you, you know, this just sounds like you're really a self-starter, you know what I'm saying? You went to the studio, um, you started the songs, you know, you started your process, talked to your brother, you know what I mean? Um, shout out to your brother telling you to record. Yeah, but, shout out to I really want to know, you know, with you being a self-starter, what, what motivates you? I feel like there's a couple things that motivate me internally and externally. If I were to think about the things that motivate me internally is just my ambition and my passion. Um, knowing that this is something that makes me happy. I'm the type of person where I'm not going to invest in something if it's not something that I feel like would add to my life, add value to the things that I care about and strive for and that I want to do. So my faith keeps me grounded in my ambition and my passion and keeps me going and if i were to talk about some of the things that motivate me externally is my family and both like blood and 
you know, the family that I acquired over time once my career took off in music. And some of the people that I would say are part of that collective group of my family are Thrill, um, KOBK, and Breach Mob, and my manager, Sadiq, and my, f my family and my relatives, my sister, my mother, my brother, my father, and just the people on the internet and strangers that support me and tell me to keep going because they really do push me to be the best that I can be and remind me that I have a purpose in this life and I'm going to fulfill it no matter what obstacle or adversity comes my way. So yeah, those are the things that motivate me. I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, talking about your ambition and your passion, like I think it's super dope. So first thing you did as an artist, like, you didn't drop a single, you just dropped Baby Steps. Yeah. Crazy. Talk to me about that. <laughs> what was that process for you, you know, saying, creating Baby Steps? And, like, what did you learn the most from that? So, technically, I did drop two singles before I dropped Baby Steps, but they're part of Baby Steps. So, mm -hmm. I kind of just wanted to see how that would go. Or figure out what the process of dropping would be. So at the time, I didn't drop on all platforms. I dropped... My first single that I dropped was a track called Outside that's on the project. And I dropped that exclusively on SoundCloud to see what people would think. Because that's one of the first songs that I wrote before I even thought of constructing the EP. And then after that, I did another session at the same studio, The Mix Loft and Quincy. And I went with Emoe Cash at the time, and I had a verse to a beat, and I laid it down, and that ended up becoming one of the other singles, Dead to Me, and Emoe Cash hopped on the track, along with one of my other friends, Straight to God. Technically, Baby Steps wasn't the first thing to drop. I dropped two singles exclusively that were on SoundCloud. Both of them are on Baby Steps. The first one was Outside. And that was the first song that I started to construct during the pandemic. I just threw on a beat and it was like, dun, 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 eh, eh, dun, 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 dun. I was like, okay, it's hard. I was like, um. so I was like taking a walk, bumping in my beats. The sun is setting. It's like golden hour. It's like fire. I'm like, okay. So I started writing that and I dropped it. Then after that, um, I recorded it at the mix off with um, Will, and then I had another session with my boy MOA Cash, who was on the project. He's on the track Dead to Me, and I started recording that single. And he hopped on it originally just for fun. He wasn't supposed to be on the song, and then it actually ended up being really fire. And then my boy Straight the God heard the demo and was like, Nah, I definitely gotta be on it. So it was on some three-headed goat tight energy for me three artists just spazzing and crazy hook and then after that that's when I'm like I kept going to the studio because of the experience it was so fun and then I ended up having six tracks in the vault and I'm like what am I gonna do like at that time everything was done everything was complete and it's like I kind of want to drop these all together but what is it going to be? Like, what's the cover art? What am I going to call it? And that's actually a funny story about how I constructed Baby Steps. Like, how how that came to be and kind of tie the bow on everything. So, it was one day. Set the scene, you know, clouds. It was one day. I was just smoking, getting faded. I was clapped. I was smack with my friend, Straight of God. We were in my room. And... We were listening to the tracks, and then I started thinking about, well, what am I going to call it? Like, what is the cover art going to be? Like, am I going to draw it? Like, what is it going to be? And in my room at the time while we are smoking, I have two things on my wall. One is a long photo wall constructed of four by four images of things that just inspire me or things that I like or I feel like are tied to my personality. And I also have a vision board that I created back in... 2017 I believe and on that vision board was just a whole bunch of things that I wanted to strive to at the time so I had like symbolism of like passing my grades being comfortable in my body um foods that I like to eat growing out my hair things all this of this nature and then I have some random words like 
K-Swiss is on it and a whole bunch of other things. And then in yellow, it, it just says baby steps. And I'm like, well, what the fuck did I put that there just right there for? Like, what's going on? Like, So I'm just looking at the vision board and I look to my photo wall and I'm just looking at my photo wall. And in one of those 4x4 images is just a baby picture of me in the studio. And I have the same color... The shirt that I have on in the photo is the same color as the font and baby steps. And I'm looking and I look back and I'm looking and I look back and I'm like, I'm faded. I'm like, yo, either I'm smacked or like this just all makes sense right now. Like this is mad weird. Why is there a photo of me in the studio? Right. And then what I'm talking about this is my first project. And then baby steps like, wow, pff, epiphany. Then I was like, yeah, that's it. Sealed it. I went on a couple of apps on my phone. I did the title. I put the parental advisory. And then I put, like, my little signature. And then what voila. we have now is just, voila, we have baby steps. And that was just a crazy thing that happened. And it's really fun to look back on how this came to be. And it wasn't intentional at all. So it's pretty. it's a pretty fire little story, you know? Wow. That ass. Wow. Right. Um, so, you know, boom. Abracadabra. Baby Steps is here. You know what I'm saying? You dropped it. You hot on the scene. How did how did Baby Steps change your life? It turned my life upside down, sideways, full 360, honestly. I think Baby Steps gave, gave me my purpose. Before... Like, during the pandemic and before the pandemic, I kind of just felt like I was just here. There was really no purpose. I was going to school at the time, and I love learning. Um, as long as it's things that I feel like add value to my life and are applicable to me. But school at the time, I, I was going to a community college, and I had... What major did I have? I just had some random major... Cause I didn't know what I wanted to do and I felt like life was just structured in a way where it's like okay you go to high school you graduate and you have to go to college and then you have to figure out what you're gonna do I was just doing that and working I, I didn't know what I wanted to be in my life I didn't know what mark and imprint I wanted to leave in this world and I just felt like there was no purpose for me being here not in a like Way, you know what I mean but like just like what what am I doing like I'm just waking up going to school going to work and breathing eating shitting and do it day by day and I didn't find any fun or I didn't feel like I was living actually so the opportunities and people that I met once it dropped and whatever exposure it gained to myself has allowed me to flourish in ways that I can't even fully express I feel like my life is just filled with love and light now and support and I finally feel happy in what I'm doing and who I'm doing it with and who I'm around and um where life is going to take me so that's how I feel like baby steps has changed my life that's that's dope that's I got nothing to say besides wow not, not to be honest your story is amazing but thank you um is, is there anything you wish you knew before you started? Is there anything I wish I knew before I started? I feel like the only thing that I wish I knew before I started was how much support I've just been getting. Or, I don't know, it's just a, the overwhelming amount of positivity and people that aren't going to look up to me now. Because there's really no way to prepare for this. Things are, at least things I've been experiencing are so unexpected. And, and you can't really prepare for the opportunities that are going to come your way. Or the type of people that are going to now enter your life. And the types of things that you're going to do. Because um, before I didn't really feel like there was people that supported me. Or wanted to see me like thrive and wanted to see me successful I can say 
aside from my family, like my friends, the people I surrounded myself with were just so comfortable with being complacent and I don't know, just submitting to what society wants you to do. So I wish in those times I knew that there was the grass was gonna be greener on the other side. I feel like it could have I could have prevented myself from I don't know, being filled with so much sadness or hurt or regret or anxiety or all those negative feelings that come with it and staying hopeful. So I think that's the only thing I wish I would have known before doing music. Cool. Sheesh. Sheesh. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you feel me? Th- all right, so... All right, so we talked about the the... The beginning, you know what I'm saying? We talked about how it changed you, you know right. what I'm saying? And so let's talk about how it like is this this is a new life, you know what I'm saying? For key sure. key to artists, key with baby steps, you know what I'm saying? So how does your regular everyday life interact with your creative life and like do those things interfere? Do they do they work well together? You know what I'm saying? Talk to us about that dynamic. Yeah. Um It's funny when I think about it because for me, there is no difference between Key the artist and Key the person. I'm the same thing and I feel like that's what sets me apart from a lot of artists because I'm so relatable or I'm so open and people may look at me as a superstar and I just feel like I'm just this regular person, you feel like I'm just me. So, um... I feel like it does kind of interfere a little bit. I feel like what, like for me, it's the same thing. I'm key at the end of the day. So I kind of just, I think that's why people are drawn to me because I'm fully authentic with who I am. I'm transparent, I'm open, and I'm vulnerable with people. And I show both sides that, you know, even though it may look pretty, like looking on the outside, looking on the inside, to, to me. And it's not always like that, honestly. I'm still a human being at the end of the day. I'm a person. I'm just your average, that, I'm just your average shorty from the bean, feel me? I'm nothing special. I am special. I feel like I'm gifted. I feel like I'm blessed. But I'm no different than a regular person or my peers. I feel like we're all special and we all have a purpose to fill on this earth and we're all gifted. So I feel like it interferes with people having this perception of me. And now it makes me have to maneuver in different ways. Like, you know, me key as a person, say if I wasn't an artist, I didn't, I wasn't doing anything big in other people's eyes and I was just a regular person working a nine to five or going to school I might my the attention looks different so you know I might have niggas you know try to talk to me because look at me so yeah who would have talked to me you know but um now I have to worry about things if people are talking to me for because of my perception and how I'm perceived by other people and the clout I may have and what comes along with that so now, you know, I'm in spaces where I'm meeting new people all the time and other people are being exposed to me and whatever they may think about me can impact how they engage and interact with me. Um, but for me personally, there, it besides those difficulties, I think I'm just living a regular life and people are curious as to how I do what I do because I'm just living and I'm just being me, and I'm doing what I want to do, and you can do it too. Like it's not we ain't gatekeeping secrets over here, you know. Just be passionate about what you do and work hard. So I feel like those are the ways that my double Hannah Montana lifestyle. For me, I go on stage, Hannah. For me, come back home, and smiley. But it's key and key. It's key key. No, no. But yeah. Getting crazy on it. That's a beautiful um <laughs> you know, segue. We're talking about not gatekeeping and being open and so if you had advice for someone who's just starting off their career and wanted to get to where you are right now, what would you tell them? Some advice that I would give 
an individual or a person that is just starting on their personal journey of whatever artistic medium they use, whether that's music or you're a dancer or you're a producer or you do film, I'd say understand that this is not something that is going to happen overnight. And a good friend of mine named Clark D told me this. It's something that's going to take a lot of work, a lot of effort, motivation, consistency, persistency, and understand it's not going to be easy all the time and things aren't just going to come to you. And you will always have to remain grounded mentally and spiritually and have faith and really believe that you can accomplish what you want to do. And take your time. There is no time limit on you know, success that looks like whatever you value it to be. And, yeah, love yourself entirely. And love the process and the journey that comes along with it. Even the, you know, the problems or the struggles or the obstacles that may come along the way. So, what is the biggest obstacle you've had to face thus far in your career? sacrifice and that looks like so many different things emotionally I have to push myself in times where I really just want to give up on myself and I have to really take care of who I am and remember who I am and not really get so clouded on what other people are doing and what other success story looks like and understand that in due time everything happens for a reason and it will happen exactly the way it's supposed to work out. Aside from that, I say my biggest challenge is like really this is all I have. I don't have anything else. Like I don't work a job right now. I'm unemployed. So Financially, I feel like that's not that's the only thing that's not fulfilling me. I feel like I'm enjoying the process and it's fulfilling me emotionally, spiritually, and I'm having a great time doing it, but I do not have the the resources to really make this sustainable for me right now. So I'm really working my ass off every day and praying and having faith that, you know, it's going to pay off in the long run, and I think it is. And, yeah, just money, really. And, I don't know, it's just the way that the system is worked up with, you know, how your life is set up. Like, you know, you're supposed to go to school. Once you get out of high school, you know, go to college. After you go to college, you can go to more school, but eventually get a job. And that's, like, your career. And that's how you sustain yourself. And that's what life looks like to a majority of different people. And that's what life looked like for my parents. And I don't, I just chose and made the decision at a young age that I don't want to live like that. Like, I don't want my life to live me, like, or my circumstances to live me. I truly want to live my life. I want to be free. I want to do things that I love. I want, it's experiences that I value the most. And I can't do that if I'm stuck in this cycle of what life is to most people or the standard societal outlook on it. And I know that with wanting to create my own world or what I want to live, that journey is going to look a lot different. It's not so cut out. It's not so cut clear. You're going to have a lot of questions and you're not going to understand how to do a lot of things. And you have to really be patient with yourself and learn at your own time. And then eventually you'll figure it out. And I feel like I'm still figuring it out. So it's challenging. She has to like be fully said for real. So my last question before we like wrap this up is, you know, you're talented. Thank you. People, you're a star. People give you mad attention. You know what I'm saying? Really, really at like I wouldn't even call this a peak. You know, like the first step of your journey. So where do you see yourself in the future? You know, five years from now, ten years from now, but just in general, like where, what, what do you see as your trajectory? In my mind, there's nowhere else to go but up. 
And I mean that in the most literal sense. Like, I feel like I'm going to be high off of life. And I feel like so many things are going to come my way. Because I've come from, I don't know, very low points or feeling like my life was dug, like dug into this big hole and I couldn't get out. And I feel like over time, I took this like mental like shovel and I carved just steps out of it. And I'm really just reaching the peak of my surface. I haven't even reached the pinnacle. And I haven't been exposed to all the grass and the air and the trees, metaphorically in a way where I'm really just living my life. That's all I strive for is to grow and just to be happy doing the things that I love to do with people that I love. And from what's been happening so far recently, not only just with me and my personal journey and my music career, but the people that I'm around, it just looks so up for us and it's just things are falling into places, places that we couldn't even see that it would land and everything's just starting to make sense so I just see myself invested in art and community and culture and just providing that more to the world and unifying us a lot more because I feel like we're in a really dark time and I feel like I'm a light truly so I feel like I'm the light that people see in me is just going to be like an infection like COVID but in a good way like an, an infectious disease and it's just gonna be like after we blow it's just i feel like life's gonna look a lot different in the next five years shit in the next 12 to 24 months to be honest like yeah and that's where i see myself in the next five years that's hard thank you so much you know <laughs> put in work tv first episode pilot episode it's I feel so, so rap, honored you know, you know? thank you um yeah for Rob for having me and thinking about me and you know you have to embody your greatness at all times and put in out work put in work work put in work work ah, ah, <laughs> sucks, sucks.